Solomon and Jesus compared. Did you know that Solomon, King Solomon, was a type and a picture of Jesus? Oh, yeah. In fact, he was the type and the picture of the thousand-year reign when the the temple is going to be magnified and glorified and Israel has the full land that was promised to them by God. So it speaks of that thousand-year reign, which is mentioned how many times? Six times in seven verses in the book of Revelation, which means to me that would mean it's literal. It's not figurative. (laughs) All right, let's get into this presentation. Solomon and Jesus compared. Very exciting exciting stuff, you guys. So Solomon, or Shlomo, I think I pronounced that right, was from 1013 to 931 BC, before Christ. Here it is, a a great picture of him right here in the temple when they were dedicating this magnificent temple, the Temple of Solomon, the very first temple that King David gathered all these goods and stuff together so that that Solomon, his son, could build this beautiful, awesome temple. And when he dedicated it to the Lord, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Did you know that? It was an amazing moment. Read it. It It's amazing stuff in the book of Kings. And the Holy Spirit was coming down and the priests fell down on their faces. And Solomon raised his hands to pray to God and the Holy Spirit filled the temple. And this was the greatest time of Israel, the most prosperous, richest, the biggest part of the land that they they owned. It was a peaceful time. That also speaks of that thousand year reign. It was just an amazing, amazing time. So here's Solomon. Great picture of him, by the way. So here's Israel today, this little footprint about the size of New Jersey, right? And King Solomon, or Solomon the Wise, as he's called, ruled Israel at its greatest, right? The greatest time of peace and prosperity. So that definitely speaks of that thousand-year reign. The footprint of the land of Israel was at its largest in history, even to today. So this is Israel today. Even back in King David's time, it never occupied all of this footprint right here. But it did during his son Solomon's reign, during this peaceful time. So it's pretty amazing stuff. However, my friend, this is all of the land that God promised to Israel right here. It comes down the Nile River, way down to here, goes straight across to the mouth of the Euphrates, Euphrates River, all the way up north into Turkey and down through here. So all of this land is the land that will be occupied during the thousand year reign. It will be the land of Israel during the thousand year reign of Christ. The Bible makes that very clear, you guys. Those All of God's promises will be fulfilled. Absolutely. He does not change his mind. So there it is. The thousand-year reign, it's going to look something like that. Pretty amazing, right? (laughs) So the Bible says that Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. Jesus referenced Solomon as a type of himself when he said this. He said, the queen of the south will rise with this generation at the judgment and will condemn it. He was prophesying. This is something that will really happen. Now, he's not talking about condemning Israel. He's talking about condemning that generation. Okay, that's what the queen of uh, the south will do. Because she came from the lands of uh, the ends of the earth, right? To hear the wisdom of Solomon and her and behold, something greater, Jesus said, than Solomon is here. So this queen came and for the, to just to witness the wisdom of Solomon, because God said he'd be the wisest man who ever lived, but something greater than Solomon, Jesus said, is here. So he's pointing out that Solomon was a type in a picture, a foreshadowing of him, of himself. Jesus was full of wisdom and truth. He himself said he is the greater than Solomon. So this is the temple. This is what it looked like during Solomon's reign. It was magnificent. There was these big pillars in the front with pomegranates on top. Uh, it, lots of pomegranate decorations, palm tree decorations. In fact, this temple was so much bigger than Herod's temple or uh, anything else because he had seven menorahs, seven golden lampstands, right? The pavers were made of silver. The stones that they walked on were made of silver. It was just an amazing, amazing temple. And it was a, a great picture of how God blessed Israel. 
So here's another picture of it. So you could see the the giant bronze lever. The uh, there was there was numerous ones of these. So everything was like multiplied as to what it was in the tabernacle. It was even more so. So Solomon's temple was amazing, and it was one of the seven wonders of the world. That's what it was known as. Isn't that amazing? Here's an inside look at it. You could see the the multiple menorahs. There were seven of those, those seven golden lampstands. There's the holy of holies, the holiest place with the Ark of the Covenant. Isn't that amazing? It's just awesome. Here's that pillar with the pomegranate on top. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. This was Herod's temple, and it was beautiful too, but it was nothing compared to what Solomon's temple was. And it's in neither one of them, neither Solomon's temple or Herod's temple are, are even close to comparing to what the Jesus, the thousand year reign, Jesus's temple is going to look like the thousand year reign, the Ezekiel temple, you might call it because he witnessed it in a vision. Pretty amazing stuff. So I want to point this out to you. This is what it looks like today on the Temple Mount. So this is that flat area that's called the Temple Mount. This is the Golden Gate right here, and it's sealed shut. This was done by Solomon the Magnificent. He's not magnificent. Jesus is magnificent, but he built this and had it sealed up because a, a Jewish rabbi or you know a scribe told him that that the Messiah was gonna come through this beautiful gate that you made. So what did he do? He had it sealed up. He said, no Jewish Messiah is coming in through this gate. And he actually fulfilled prophecy because in Ezekiel, in, in chapter, I think it's 41 or 42, God says, I think it's 42, he says that I will seal up this gate. After the Messiah entered through it, he's gonna seal it up so that it will be shut and only the Messiah will come back and enter through it. So over here is what's called the Dome of the Tablets. It's up on that north of the temple, of the Dome of the Rock, the north side of the Temple Mount. And what they say is right here is a flat bedrock. And they believe that this is, a lot of the scholars, archaeologists believe that this is where the Ark of the Covenant sat. So this could be the very spot where the Holy of Holies is because they call this the Dome of the Spirits or the Dome of the Tablets. And it's flat bedrock with no chisel marks. Pretty amazing stuff. You're going to see more of that. So Solomon's Temple, the Chief Cornerstone, 967 BC. This is the story of the Chief Cornerstone. Jesus referenced that, right? So his temple was complete in 967 BC, before Christ. This is an outline if you were looking at a map from above of what the footprint looked like. Here's the, the lower city, the city of David, right? And then Solomon expanded it, creating this area. This is the area that you see today, which is the Temple Mount, right? This whole area up here. And it's interesting. Here's where the East Gate is, right? And this is where Solomon's temple was. Here's the altar. And it all lines up like the original east gate solomon's temple this was solomon's royal palace down here to the south now there's something very interesting about that and i believe that might have been where herod's temple was if you watch this so solomon's temple was here right here's the east gate this this was his footprint of his royal palace that's just a closer view of that now here's an outline a map of where herod's temple was the beautiful gate was right in front of herod's temple right over there but it does not line up with the golden gate or the east gate I think that this lines up with where Solomon's temple was, and it lines right up with Golgotha, the place where Jesus was crucified. Isn't that amazing? We're going to get into that a little more, you guys, so stay tuned. Watch this. Solomon's temple. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures a stone which the builders rejected? This has become the chief cornerstone. So Jesus was referring to this rejected stone from Solomon's time. They all knew about this story back then. And he was referencing that stone as a picture and a type of himself. Watch this. This is amazing. Solomon's temple. Okay, so it came about from the Lord. This is the, the scripture on it right here from Matthew, right? That this, this came about from the Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Jesus continued talking about this rejected cornerstone. So in 1517, let's go forward in history again, right? This is that guy, Solomon the Magnificent. This is a funny hat, is it not? <laughs> Look at that thing. It looks like a giant onion or something. <laughs> this is crazy. I mean, you must have stored tools in there. Look at the size of this hat. But anyway, this is the, the Ottoman Turk guy they call Solomon, Solomon, excuse me, the Magnificent. He was not magnificent. Only Jesus is. But he had that built, as you see it today, the outer walls of Jerusalem, and he had it sealed shut, this beautiful east gate. 
And then he had the graves put in front of it, these Muslim graves, so that the, the Messiah couldn't possibly walk over these to go through this gate. Jesus can do anything. <laughs> He's God the Son. He can do whatever he wants. No man is going to stop him from doing anything. So that was 1517 when that was done. So the East Gate, here it is again. This is the outline. Here's the Antonio Fortress, right? Here's where Herod's temple was, which I believe was built over where Solomon's palace was. And I believe Solomon's temple was up here because this was the portal of Solomon over here too, where this golden gate is today. Underneath is what is called the East Gate of Solomon. They found Solomon's pillars and bricks underneath of that. And it lines right up from the Mount of Olives through that gate, Solomon's temple to what? Golgotha. Amazing stuff, guys. Here's a drawing I made of it that you can check out. So underneath of this golden gate, as you see it today in Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, right? You can see these, they found these original pillars from the east gate of Solomon's temple. So if you do a straight line through here, it takes you to the dome of the tablets, which is that bedrock, that flat piece of bedrock, which has no chisel marks, which I believe is the Holy of Holies where the ark sat because it was a flat spot. Remember, David purchased that place. It was the threshing floor, and he purchased that. And I believe Solomon built his temple right over that. And then it lines right up with traditional Golgotha. Amazing. Here's a big picture from the top looking down. The Temple Mount, where Herod's temple was. The Golden Gate was right there. The East Gate was up here. This is the place they called Solomon's Porch or Solomon's Portugal, where Peter and John did lots of preaching and there's a lot of healings going on there. Mount of Olives, there's a line that goes straight across to the outside of the old walls where Jesus would have been crucified. Wow. <laughs> now here's a picture, you guys. Check this out. Ezekiel sees a vision in chapter 48 and in a lot, a lot of different chapters uh, in the 40s there. You can read all that. It's really interesting. But in 48, this, these are the walls and it's the sons. These gates have the, the names of the sons of Israel, the sons of Jacob, right? Reuben, Judah, Levi. Remember that? And then on the east side, he has Joseph, Benjamin, and Dan. On the south, there's Zebulun, Issachar, Simeon, Gad, Asher, Nephtali on the west. So there's these outer gates to the new Jerusalem that Ezekiel sees in this amazing vision. And he also sees the temple and the altar. And it says that Ezekiel, he says he walked out through the gate to the north. What would that be? The gate of Levi. Ezekiel was a Levite. He was of that tribe and he was a priest and he was a prophet. The only one I believe that was. And he walks out of this gate and around to the gate that faces east. And what does he see? He sees the name Joseph on that gate. That's the, the gate that's named the exits and the entrances, the one that's named Joseph. And here it is up in the corner, right? What does that remind you of? The chief corner stone. If you read the prophecy in Genesis chapter 49 that his father Jacob has for both Judah and himself and Joseph, they're very both very messianic. And it speaks of Joseph as being the stone the, the, from the shepherd, right? The, the stone. What does that speak of? Jesus. And his life was a picture and a type of Jesus. Check out my video on these videos I've done on Joseph. There's a whole series on it where you can see Jesus in his story big time. But Ezekiel walks around here. He sees this river flowing out of the south side of the gate and south side of the altar, south side of the gate, and it increases and gets bigger and bigger and bigger, which speaks of Jesus' return. Because when he returns, he touches down on the Mount of Olives, and this is in the Old Testament, and the mountain splits in two, and it becomes a gorge where that river from the temple flows out from underneath the south side of the altar, the south side of the east gate, down through that, that new gorge that's when Jesus touches down the Mount of Olives, it splits in two, right? And there's actually a fault line that runs through there right now. Did you know that? It's amazing stuff, right? And that river is going to flow out into the Red Sea and it's going to heal its waters. And the fish of the sea will swim up that river. It's an amazing, amazing thing that God has in store for us. So here's a, a picture of that temple once more, you guys. Ezekiel 48, verses 30 through 34, talk about these names. And then there's a previous chapter where he walks out 
Through here, Ezekiel does, and he sees this through the east gate. Amazing. It all speaks of Jesus. So Ezekiel 43, verses 8 through 9 says this. When they set their threshold by my threshold, this is the Lord speaking, and their doorpost by my doorpost with a wall between them and me, they defiled my holy name by the abominations which they committed. Therefore, I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put their harlotry and their carcasses of their kings far away from me, and I will dwell in their midst forever. Now imagine that when Jesus was there, there was Herod's temple right here, and this is where the Dome of the Rock is, I believe, today. And this is where that ark sat, probably, in Herod's temple. But this was the right place to the north, where Solomon's temple was. And he says, when you put their doorpost by my doorpost and a wall between them and me, perhaps there was a wall right here. There was a wall right here for this outer court of Herod's temple. And Jesus wasn't about this temple. He wasn't about Herod or any of that. But he did like Solomon's temple, and he did a lot of preaching and teaching over here at the portal of Solomon, the porch of Solomon, which is where? Where the East Gate is. And it all lines up with Golgotha. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Here's a close-up of it again. On Mount of Olives, through Solomon's porch, through that dome of the tablets, as you would see it today, right? And the Dome of Rock would be right over here where Herod's temple was, where Solomon's palace probably was at one time. And there's a straight line to Golgotha. Amazing stuff. Here's a close-up of that Dome of the Tablets right here. Here's the Mount of Olives up here. Here's that East Gate right here. And it lines right up with this flat bedrock with no chisel marks right here with this Dome of the Spirits or the Dome of the Tablets is positioned right over. Here's a close-up of it right here. I can't wait to see this when I go to Israel. This is the one place that I want to really see right here. Amazing, is it not? <laughs> God is so good. Here's a big, it's kind of a fuzzy picture, but there's the Golden Gate or where the original East Gate was. You can draw a straight line through here to the Dome of the Tablets right here, and then all the way up into Golgotha. Here's another one. <laughs> I got a lot of them, right? Mount of Olives through that original. Here's where those pillars were they found right here and here. And this is the Golden Gate that Solomon built in 1517 AD. And it lines right up with where Solomon's porch would have been and right where Solomon's temple would have been, where that dome of the tablets is today, and then to Golgotha. Wow. So Ezekiel 46, 1 says this, Thus says the Lord, the gateway of the inner court that faces the east shall be shut six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be opened. And on the day of the new moon it shall be opened. Now, look at this, Psalm 81, 3 through 5. Read this. Blow the trumpet at the time of the new moon, at the full moon on our solemn feast day. For this is a statute for Israel, a law of the God of Jacob. This he established in Joseph as a testimony when he went out throughout the land of Egypt where I heard a language I did not understand. Right here he says Joseph as a testimony. And right here he says new moon, which looks a lot like this in Ezekiel. And Joseph as a testimony. Did you know that in the Old Testament, when you see the word testimony, it references God himself? Yeah. And Joseph was a testimony. Joseph was a picture of God himself. God the Son, Jesus. Amazing, you guys. Wow. This is stuff that God put in Scripture for us. I love it, don't you? Acts chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. This is the early church, the early, the Acts of the church. That's basically Luke's second scroll, right, that he wrote. First one was the Gospel of Luke. But here it is, Acts Chapter 3, verse 10. Then they knew that it was he who sat baying alms at the beautiful gate. Remember, that's the, the gate of that area of, of uh, Herod's temple inside the, the temple mount, right? And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So this guy was like crippled for many, many years. And Peter, well, he, he was healed by Peter going by him. Remember that? And now as the lame man who was healed onto Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. 
And then in Acts 5, 12, it says this, And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord. Where? Solomon's porch. Why does God make this a big deal about Solomon's porch? Because it was to the north of Herod's temple. It was not where Herod's temple is. Here it is again. The Dome of the Rock, rock is right here. This is right where Herod's temple was, right? This area right here, the beautiful gate just went to this outer courtyard. There's the inner courtyard. There was a wall right here. I believe this is where Solomon's temple was and it fulfills what Ezekiel said. Now let's read this. Check this out, you guys. When they set their threshold by my threshold and their doorpost by my doorpost, God speaking, right? This is Ezekiel 43, eight through nine. With a wall between them and me, they defiled my holy name by the abominations which they committed. Therefore, I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put their harlotry and their carcasses for their kings far away from me, and I will dwell in their midst forever. So Ezekiel 43, 10 through 11 says this, Son of man, describe the temple to the house of Israel so that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. This is a lot of what Jewish uh, history, the rabbis in history would look for as patterns. That's a type of prophecy to them. And if they are ashamed of all that they have done, make known to them, watch this, this is amazing, make known to them the design of the temple and its arrangement, its exits, and its entrances. Whoa, my friend, did we not just see that in Ezekiel's vision? When he walked out of that north gate around to the east gate, Joseph's name on it, described to them the exits and its entrances that they could turn to God. They could see this. This is amazing stuff, you guys. God hid all of these gems in the Old Testament scriptures to help us understand the New Testament and the end and how his, his plan will be played out. Let's look at that one more time. That is so awesome, you guys. So here it is, Ezekiel 43, 10 through 11. And if they are ashamed of all that they have done, Make known to them the design of the temple and its arrangement, arrangement and its exits and entrances. We can see that it all points, my friend, to the foot of the cross. Remember, it points to Golgotha. Zechariah 12.10 says this, And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication when they look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. Wow, what a place to end it right there, is it not, you guys? This is speaking of the Jewish people recognizing their, their long lost brother whom was thrown under the bus many years ago. He was rejected, despised and rejected many years ago, just like Joseph. Yosef, right? He was despised and rejected by his own. They told their father that he was ripped apart by a wild animal, just like the Psalm 22 was changed to like a lion's paw. They, they clawed at me instead of they pierced my hands and feet. But what happens in Joseph's story later, they discover he is not only alive, he is in charge of everything and at the right hand of the power. And they come face down, bow down before him. And he says, Ani Yosef, I am Joseph. And they were scared and frightened. But what happens? He says, come closer, don't be afraid. And he forgave them and he showed great mercy and grace to them. And he gives them the best of the land. He unites them and his, his new Gentile bride, his new family and his old family as one family, one Israel forever and ever. Who does that speak of? Jesus, Yeshua. <laughs> so amazing. I love that, don't you? Hey, if you want to see more, click on this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. You will be blessed on it. So click on that playlist right here, my friend.